A record-breaking contract was made this week for one baseball team, and Witter has started a month early, but how is it affecting the United States? And also, what famous daughter is speaking out about her controversial relationship with her mother? We have all this and more coming up right here on Take 30 News. Keeping our state informed. Broadcasting from the home of the Bulldogs. Now, from the University Television Studios of Mississippi State University, this is Take 30 News. A plane crash in Chicago shockingly left one person dead. We have the details and how are doctors spreading awareness for diabetes in Mississippi? I'm Heather Black. And I'm Devin Dito. A high school student saved an infant's life in a Missouri supermarket. This is Take 30's top story. In a Missouri Walmart story, one high school student performed a task to, a task to save a child's life. Hillsboro High School student Abby Snodgrass was in a Walmart dressing room when she heard the emergency page. She, she then fled from the room to find a number of people surrounding the 11-month-old who was non-responsive. Snodgrass took it upon herself to perform CPR and chest compressions until the child began breathing again. The local fire district chief said the child might not have survived without the help of Snodgrass. Michael Brown was the unarmed black teenager who was shot to death by a police officer three months ago. Governor Jay Dixon has declared a state of emergency for Ferguson, Missouri. As crowds protect due to anticipation of the grand jury decision, the National Guard has been called to prevent violence from breaking out. With the Guard coming in for help, they would still only play a minimum role. The grand jury's decision in the case is expected to be announced in mid to late November. With National Diabetes Awareness Month in full swing, health officials around the country and here in Starkville are trying to raise, raise awareness about the deadly disease. For health officials around the country, Diabetes Awareness Month is vital in helping to spread awareness and prevention education. Even here at Mississippi State, the nurses and dietitians are doing their part to help spread awareness. Mandy Conrad, who is a dietitian in the Student Health Center, says students can help themselves later in life by starting prevention now. And also from the prevention side of it, activity is one of the number one things you can do to decrease your risk. And this is going to help for a couple of reasons. Um, it helps with weight management and carrying it around a little extra weight we know increases your risk of developing diabetes. So exercise is one of the best things you can do to help control your weight. So that's going to impact your risk factors for diabetes. Who are already fighting the disease, there are numerous ways to get help. Nikki Yateman, who works in the Diabetes Management Center at Octippaha County Hospital, says that education about the disease is the most important factor in fighting it. Much of the state of Mississippi is definitely at risk for type 2 diabetes in particular. Um, it's the type of diabetes that comes on more gradual over time. Um, there is some genetic predisposition. So if you know that your mom, dad, or brother or sister have diabetes, that puts you at higher risk. If you know you tend to be the type of person who gains extra weight specifically more around the midsection, um, then your risk factors for having diabetes are a little bit higher than some of the rest of us. Come back. If, if you or anyone would like more information on the risk factors of diabetes or where to get treatment, you can contact the Diabetes Management Center at 662-615-2668. A small cargo plane crashed into a Chicago home early Tuesday morning. It was reported that the pilot was killed in the crash, but no one in the house was injured. The Aero Commander 500 entered the front of the house around 2.40 a.m., crashing through the ground floor and into the basement. The couple that lived in the home was in their bedroom at the time of the crash. First responders reported that the couple refused any treatment and were fine. The National Transportation Safety Board is currently investigating the accident and should have a preliminary report with in the next week. Two Fury helpers in Mississippi are receiving protective vests thanks to a, na a nationwide effort. Calhoun and Union County Sheriff's Departments will receive bullet and stat-proof vests for their drug and trafficking dog tracking dogs. 
Canines Achilles and Dutch would be better protected when out fighting crime with their fellow officers. Groupon Grassroots invested interest in canines raised $350,000 earlier this year for the new vest. The program would make nearly 1,200 custom-made vests for selected police departments throughout the U.S. It takes several weeks for the vest to be made, delivered, and distributed. Stay tuned to Take 30 News. Up next, Nikki Ariana will inform us on how the NFL plans to boost their reputation. Based on recent survey, Mississippi is ranked third as worst state when it comes to littering. Hey! It is up to you to make a difference. Seriously, the trash can's right there. How do you miss that anyway? Do what's right and help prevent littering. Keep Mississippi clean and pick it up. It used to be about black and white. Things are different now. We live in a world of color. We no longer live in a world of black and white. I. 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 I am more than the color of my skin. Butterfly in the sky. I can go twice as high. Take a look. It's in a book. A reading rainbow. You're watching Take 30 News on MSTV 98. Stay tuned for sports coming up next. Welcome back to Take 30. I'm here with Nikki Ariana. Nikki, I hear the UConn's women's team finally got their first taste of the defeat. They've been undefeated for the past two years straight, and the team that beat them has done this before. But I'll have more about that coming up on Take 30 Sports. Welcome back to Take 30. I'm Nikki Ariana with all the news from the world of sports. Tennessee Volunteers linebacker A.J. Johnson and Michael Williams have been suspended from all team-related activities. Announced yesterday, the two players were named during an investigation into an alleged rape this past Sunday. Although they have not been charged, one of the alleged victims has said that she will be filing charges. The Knox County Prosecutor's Office has not decided yet if there's enough evidence and statements to issue an arrest warrant. Johnson has been a big part of the team's defense this season. He has 101 combined tackles and two sacks in 10 games. The cornerback for the USC Trojans, Josh Shaw, was suspended from the team for lying about claiming to have jumped off the 20-foot high balcony to save his nephew from drowning, where he sprained both of his ankles. He later confessed that he jumped for other reasons. The neighbors overheard Shaw and his girlfriend yelling when they contacted the police. Shaw's girlfriend confirmed that he never touched her, and after further investigation, the police confirmed their story and will not press charges. USC will wait for the police to finish their investigation so that they can determine Shaw's future with the school. The NFL is trying its best to change the face of the athletes with the domestic violence. After the Ray Rice and Adrian Peterson incidents, the NFL is starting to educate every team on domestic violence, sexual assault, and child abuse. The new 45-minute program is detailed with facts and instructions of what to do if these crimes occur within any situation. This presentation has been mandatory to preview for all 32 owners and teams. The NFL wants every player and employee to know and understand that they are accountable for their behavior, whether it be good or bad. 
The Connecticut women's basketball team got its first taste of defeat in nearly two years as they were upset by Stanford Monday night. Led by Lily Thompson, who had 24 points, the number six Cardinals needed overtime to beat the Huskies 88 to 86. Stanford's coach, Tara Vandeveer, said, quote, I think everyone got their money's worth tonight. End quote. This isn't the first time the Cardinals ended the Huskies' winning streak. Back in 2010, Stanford ended UConn's winning streak at 90 games. Since they were established, the Marlins have been known for having the lowest payroll until this week. The Marlins have signed recent Hank Aaron Award winner Giancarlo Stanton to a $325 million contract over the next 13 years, which averages about $25 million a year, or on an even smaller scale, about $150,000 per game. This tops both Miguel Cabrera and Alex Rodriguez, who both have 10-year contracts, which equal close to $300 million. Well, that's all for Take 30 Sports for this week. Coming up next, the Kia Group will sit down with this year's Miss Black and Gold. The rainforest is home to nearly two-thirds of animal species, and almost half the medicines that we use come from rainforests. But by 2060, nearly all of our rainforests will be gone. So how do we stop it? One way is to recycle. At home, at work, at school. Recycle paper, cans, bottles, and more. Also, save energy by using cold water in the washing machine. Keep your car tuned up and carpool or use public transportation. And finally, spread the word to everyone you know about ways you can save our rainforests. It used to be about black and white. Things are different now. We live in a world of color. We no longer live in a world of black and white. I. 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 I am more than the color of my skin. Some people think they don't have to obey the rules. But when it comes to the rules here at Mississippi State, you better take notice. Don't think you're above the law or they'll find you. Nope. You could find yourself on the outside looking in. Ring responsibly, MSU. Whoa! Irresponsible. Trashy. Stop! Here's your ticket, ma'am. But I only have seven ninety-five. Don't whine. Go pay your fine. Oh, shucks. I knew I shouldn't have done that. Keep Mississippi beautiful. Don't litter. To Take 30 News, I'm Zakia Good, and today we're here with the new 2014 Miss Black and Gold, Miss Quinosha Payton. Thank you for joining us. So, how does it feel to have this prestigious position as Miss Black and Gold? It feels amazing. It's truly a blessing, mm -hmm. and I'm just excited to have the title. Okay, what did you prepare or how did you prepare for this position? Preparation was mainly going to the gym, making sure that I was up to date on all the news and what was going on around me, and um, perfecting my talent. It was very good, by the way. Thank you. So what is your platform? My platform is called I Am Who I Say I Am, and it's mainly just teaching young ladies how to prepare themselves for college, as far as knowing how to apply for the FAFSA and mm -hmm. getting through all the preparation. Okay, what was your favorite part of the pageant? You did well in all categories, but what was your favorite? My favorite part had to have been um, the talent area because I did work so hard for that. Um, my biggest fear is actually singing in front of people, so just to be able to get over my fear and perform in front of everyone was very exciting, and I'm so happy I got over it. Okay, so what's up next for your schedule? What, what, what's, what's next for Miss Black and Gold? The next thing is actually going to compete in districts for um, Miss Black and Gold. It's very exciting. You get to meet all the um, actual winners from every other school that's around you. So I'm very excited to meet them and see who wins. Hopefully it'll be me. Okay, so can you tell the difference now that you've won such a prestigious role? No, I'm still the same. I still feel like everyone treats me the same. It's just a lot of congratulations right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm just so thankful. I'm just experiencing a great honor. So. Okay, well thank you for joining us today. Thank that you. That will be all for Take 30 News. Up next is Nia Short, and guess what celebrity had a fabulous wedding over the weekend? 
The rainforest is home to nearly two-thirds of animal species, and almost half the medicines that we use come from rainforests. But by 2060, nearly all of our rainforests will be gone. So how do we stop it? One way is to recycle. At home, at work, at school. Recycle paper, cans, bottles, and more. Also, save energy by using cold water in the washing machine. Keep your car tuned up and carpool or use public transportation. And finally, spread the word to everyone you know about ways you can save our rainforests. It used to be about black and white. Things are different now. We live in a world of color. We no longer live in a world of black and white. I. 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 I am more than the color of my skin. Some people think they don't have to obey the rules. But when it comes to the rules here at Mississippi State, you better take notice. Don't think you're above the law where they'll find you. Nope. You could find yourself on the outside looking in. Ring responsibly, MSU. Whoa! Irresponsible. Trashy. Stop! Here's your ticket, ma'am. But I only have $7.95! Don't whine! Go pay your fine. Oh, shucks. I knew I shouldn't have done that. Keep Mississippi beautiful. Don't litter. Welcome back to Take 30 News. I'm Naya Short with today's Look Into the World of Entertainment. Bill Cosby, known for his acting role as Dr. Cliff Huxtable from the hit famous television series, The Cosby Show, has found himself in the spotlight for numerous rape accusations. Over the course of several days, women have voiced their personal encounters with Cosby and mentioned how he secretly drugged them by slipping the substance into their alcohol beverages that he himself purchased as the cordial gesture. In 2005, the comedian witnessed another lawsuit of the small rape accusations, but it was settled outside of the court. Bill Cosby has not responded since the last accusations. Actress and model Brooke Shields open, uh, opens up about her controversial relationship with her mother and manager Terry Shields. In her new emotion field biography, there was, there was a little girl, the real story of my mother and me. Terry Shields passed away two years ago at the age of 79 and her death inspired Brooke to write the truth about the life they once shared. Terry Shields was often frowned upon for the risk of decisions she made, especially when she placed Brooke Shields in the 1998 film Pretty, as a ba Pretty Baby as a prostitute at the age of 12. Shields told USA Today that the book was not, quote, Mommy Dear's book, end quote, and would shed light on the dramatic childhood she experienced. The book is available in stores today. After appealing on the Harper's Bazaar cover in September, Audrey Hepburn's granddaughter Emma Farrah is now a top model alongside the famed Kate Moss and Cara DeVinge. 22-year-old Farrah is a former ballerina and a current art student attending the Florence Academy of Art. Now that she has signed a modeling contract with the Storm Model Management, she will be moving back to New York City to attend the Academy Satellite at campus. In Jersey City, according to Harper Bazaar's magazine, Farrah says, quote, I am more looking forward to meeting different photographers with different visions and learning about fashion, end quote. Solange Knowles and hubby Alan Ferguson got married last week in New Orleans. The 28-year-old sister of Beyonce dated husband for several years, joking, quote, Luckily, I dated all the losers years ages ago, end quote. The ceremony was held in New Orleans with an intimate setting of 200, including close family members, friends, and friends. According to Harper Bazaar, the couple arrived at the ceremony on two white vintage bicycles. The bride's basket was decorated with white roses. The bride arrived in a cream jumpsuit with a cape and changed into a cape gown for the ceremony. 
Fans of the popular comic strip Peanut are in for a surprise when the new move arrives in the new movie will arrive in theaters next year as Charlie Brown, Snoopy, Woodstock, and the rest of the gang come to life. With brand new 3D computer animation, producer Paul Fagg has stated that they won't seek to update Charlie Brown with the new with the pop culture of today. Yet instead they will seek to focus the classic quality that made the fans originally fall in love with the Charlie School's characters. The film is said to be released November 20, November 6, 2005. That's all for Take 30's Entertainment. Be sure to stay tuned to hear what could be affecting over 50% of the U.S. this week. The rainforest is home to nearly two-thirds of animal species, and almost half the medicines that we use come from rainforests. But by 2060, nearly all of our rainforests will be gone. So how do we stop it? One way is to recycle. At home, at work, at school. Recycle paper, cans, bottles, and more. Also, save energy by using cold water in the washing machine. Keep your car tuned up and carpool or use public transportation. And finally, spread the word to everyone you know about ways you can save our rainforests. It used to be about black and white. Things are different now. We live in a world of color. We no longer live in a world of black and white. I. 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 I am more than the color of my skin. Some people think they don't have to obey the rules. When it comes to the rules here at Mississippi State, you better take notice. Don't think you're above the law. Or they'll find you. Nope. You could find yourself on the outside looking in. Ring responsibly, MSU. Irresponsible. Trashy. Stop! Here's your ticket, ma'am. But I only have $7.95. Don't whine. Go pay your fine. Oh, shucks. I knew I shouldn't have done that. Keep Mississippi beautiful. Don't, Don't litter. You're watching Take 30 News on MSTV 98. Our state, our news. Welcome back. It's been two years since the tragic Sandy Hook massacre. Gunman Alan Adam Lanza, excuse me, killed 20 children, six employees, and his mother and himself at Sandy Hook Elementary School on December 14, 2012. Six-year-old Benjamin Wheeler was one of those 20 children that was killed. His parents, Francine and David Wheeler, have welcomed a new baby into their family. Matthew Bennett Wheeler was born last week, weighing eight pounds and eight ounces. In September, Benjamin Wheeler was honored in his birth place, Sunnyside Queens, which renamed a corner of 41st Street and Queens Boulevard after the young boy. Gun laws have become a nationwide issue and one MSU sorority joined in on the debate. The ladies of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated housed at Mississippi State University hold a program entitled Devastating Debate. The program, which focused on issues surrounding gun laws, participated is to kind of back one of our programmatic thrusts, political awareness and involvement. We know that gun laws with a lot of shootings that has been going on, that has been a really common topic within America. So we decided to host a debate to see everyone else's point of view and also so that they can see other point of views than their own. Each team was given time to research and develop arguments for their stance on guns, followed by a series of arguments and crossfires to, to determine the overall winner. Organizers believe the program was a success. 
Wedding bells may soon ring for mass murderer Charles Manson. The 80 year old is said to have obtained a wedding license to wed 26 year old Afton Elaine Burton, also known as the name Star. The couple received a license earlier this month to marry in December, but last December Manson said, quote, that's a bunch of garbage. That's trash. We're playing that for the public consumption, end quote. Manson was imprisoned in 1969 for the killing of actress Sharon Tate and six others. When asked why Burton wants to marry a man with such a disturbing background, she said that there is information that family can't obtain, but the next of kin can. She is hoping to get the life sentence prisoner a new trial. Winter has started a month early in the United States this year with 49 states reaching temperatures below freezing Tuesday morning. Every state besides Hawaii reported temperatures below freezing in at least one portion of the state and many have freeze warnings. Meteorologists announced that these temperatures are the lowest they have been in the month of November since 1976, but are going to get even colder. Wednesday and Thursday are expected, expected to bring a second cold front and blanket 50% of the United States with snow. One Starkville Athletic Store is encouraging locals to suit up and run. Nearly one year ago, Starkville's Main Street gained a unique new addition to its storefront. Stinky Feet Athletics is a retail outlet stocked with the best shoes and gadgets for their running customers. Stinky Feet wanted to give customers the opportunity to not only find the perfect gear, but to use it. Tuesday nights at 630, we meet in front of the Sanderson Center to try and drive a little more of the college atmosphere to those runs. Um, we've got a pretty good community following, but we really haven't dove into the college market yet. So our idea was to get a guy out there that was going to be consistent and help lead those groups for us and it's a free thing they just meet at 6 30 on tuesday nights and they do the run to just get people moving stinky feet has a calendar full of events for the month of november this thursday they are holding a five dollar 5k benefiting cold elam Call for shoe boxes are filling up in Columbus and across the world for the annual Operation Christmas Child. The national event kicked off Monday as givers turn in their shoe boxes filled with toys, school supplies, and non-liquid personal hygiene items. The shoe boxes will be collected and sent to children in developing countries and those impacted by natural disasters. North Mississippi has several locations to drop off the box gift in places like Aberdeen, Columbus, and Starkville. For a list of those centers, you can log on to the, to, to the Operation Christmas Child website at christmaschild.com. The, the box collection goes through November 24th. Starkville's backstage music brought music to musicians' ears for bringing food to those in need. Local music store, Backstage Music, put up signs reading that for a donation of five non-perishable food items, a guitar owner could get a $20 restring for free. The owners participate in the program's Dreams for Food, where they take donations for a local food pantry from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. as they do free restrings. The idea of spending $4 for food and getting a $20 restring job, they like that. They also like the feeling they give knowing that they're donating to the needy. And the food banks like it because they're always low on food around Thanksgiving. So we always do this a couple of weeks before Thanksgiving. Because food pantries have trouble funding food, for the last four years, Backstage Music has eased the burden of two local food pantries by dividing the donations between Calvary Baptist Church and St. Joseph Catholic Church. It's a wonderful thing because it's it's something that we have to give to people who are needing food and so um, it's, it's food we don't have to go out and purchase and come up with the money to pay for and, and so forth. So yeah, it's, it's a great thing. The store gets several professionals to come in and volunteer their time and labor in assisting with the restringing of the guitars. Each guitar gets handed off to one of the six to seven professionals in the bank once the food is inspected for the expiration date. So people bring their guitars in and they bring food and so they put the food in the basket and then they hand me the guitar and say put some strings on this thing. They received 12 pounds of food for every restring that was done, but the store's goal of 600 pounds of food was shy by 200 at the end of the day. The program resulted in a loss of $660. There are no worries, they say, because it was all for a good cause. <laughs> All right, that's all we have for you today. My name is Devin Dito. And I'm Heather Black. Thanks for watching. See you next time.